Welcome to Beat Diabetes. I'm Dennis Pollock, and today we're going to talk about keto bread, the kind you find in your grocery stores. I was at the store the other day, and I bought a couple of keto breads. One was hamburger buns made by Nature's Own, boasting the word keto right across the top of the package and declaring they only had one net gram of carbs per bun. And then the other one was also Nature's Own, also with a big word keto splashed over the top of the package and also declaring just one net gram of carbs per slice in this case. So I thought I would put them to the test and see how well they did. Now, let me talk about some of the positives first of keto breads like these. Uh, the first is uh, they, they are just so convenient. You don't have to make anything. You don't have to mess up your kitchen putting all kinds of ingredients together. You don't have to turn on your oven and let things cook. You just pull them out of the package and boom, you are ready to go. Now, these keto breads all have high carb counts, about like regular bread would. So that's not uh, so good. You say, well, how can they be keto breads if they have high carb counts? Well, somehow they have devised a way, and I'm not just talking about nature's own. I'm, uh, there's a, a bunch of them. They all do the same thing, which is they create some type of fiber within the bread. And the idea is that it's just going to be so strongly packed together that it's going to go right through your system and it's not going to affect your blood sugar. So even though in this case uh, the buns have 16 grams of carbs per bun, 15 of those grams are fiber grams. So theoretically, they shouldn't do a single thing to your blood sugar. Only one gram is actually a real gram of bread that's going to affect your blood sugar, and one gram of, of carbohydrates is not going to affect blood sugar much. With the regular soft white bread, as they call it, 10 grams of carbs per slice, and nine of those grams are fiber. Uh, I, I sometimes call them fake fiber. They're not really a naturally occurring fiber. They're a engineered, manipulated kind of a fiber that's been created. And the idea is it'll just run right through your system and it will not affect your blood sugar. Well, we're going to put it to the test. And I did put it to the test. As I'm sharing this, I've already done those tests. So I'm going to report what I uh, discovered. Uh, one other positive about these keto breads is they just flat taste good. They don't, you could hardly tell the difference. I mean, some people claim they can. I can't. Uh, this bread tastes just like real bread. I would never know the difference by taste. And these buns taste like real hamburger buns. Would never know the difference. I wouldn't. You might, but I wouldn't. And I don't think most people would. So they're convenient. They claim they don't spike blood sugar, raise blood sugar much at all. They taste just about as good as their regular bread uh, brothers and cousins. So, I mean, how could they not be a great thing for diabetics if they don't spike your blood sugar? Well, the negative is they do seem to spike or at least raise blood sugar somewhat significantly in some cases and with some people. Some people more than others, some situations more than others. So it's like, all right, Nature's Own is, is in the keto business. Nature's Own Bread is now declaring themselves to be a keto company, at least in these cases. They do make regular bread, of course. So let's uh, look at the test that I did. First, with the hamburger bun, I did what you would do with a hamburger bun, right? I made a hamburger and put it on top of the bun, and I put on some other toppings like a tomato, like some picante sauce. I always choose picante sauce over ketchup because it has less carbs and less sugars to it. So picante sauce, tomato slice, and some lettuce. And then I put the top bun on. Now, that's breaking my normal rule. My normal rule is you just use one. If you're going to use keto bread at all, which I do, I'm not going to be a hypocrite and tell you I never do. But my rule has always been just one slice. So if I'm going to use hamburger buns, I would use just the bottom. Or a lot of times I don't even fool with the hamburger buns. I just buy this regular bread and I just turn that into a open face sandwich and put a hamburger on top of it and whatever else I want. 
In this case, I, I use a top and bottom bun, and uh, I put on the toppings, and I decided to push the envelope. It's like, all right, if these guys are really one net gram per bun, I ought to be able to get by with three of these half buns, you might say. So I had a full bun with a hamburger on it or in it, and then I had another half bun with a tuna salad on it. Now, tuna salad is a great option for diabetics because the tuna has no carbs and the, uh, the relish has no carbs unless it's sweetened. And you don't want to sweeten, but you can sweeten it with a packet of stevia or something like that. And then I put on mayonnaise, which has no carbs. Most mayonnaise does not. So, I mean, it's basically a carb-free food except you have to put it on something. You don't just eat tuna salad out of your hands. And that's the problem because what do we put tuna salad on? We put it on bread. But in this case, I used uh, one of the hamburger buns or half of it. And I thought, let's just push the envelope. I'll have a full hamburger bun top and bottom. And I'll have another half that I'll put some tuna salad on. A very filling meal for me. And let's just see where it goes. So what were my scores? Well, before I had this meal. I had an 88, so my pre-meal test was was a good one. Whenever I'm in the 80s, I'm happy, and it seemed like I had more 80s this time around uh, than I had uh, I have had previously. So 88 before the meal, one hour 15 minutes afterwards, which should be where I'm hitting my spike, my peak, where it reaches the top and then starts going back down. One hour 15 minutes afterwards, 115. Well, you may say 115 is not bad. It's not. But when you're going from 88 to 115, that's a pretty significant rise. I wasn't thrilled about it. But worse yet was the three hour. I waited until three hours and 15 minutes after I finished that meal. And I tested again. And in this case, you'd think, well, surely you'll be down to your baseline level. You'll be back down into the 80s or at least the 90s. In three hours and 15 minutes after you finish that meal, I was higher still. I was at 121. Now, 121 is not terrible. But, you, but I went three hours plus after the meal, and I'm still higher than I was at one hour, 15 minutes. Uh, not exactly uh, very pleasing to me. So those fiber carbs, now keep in mind, with that full bun and that half bun, that should have been about... <laughs> 1.5 grams of carbs involved in the buns, and all the other stuff was minimal. I mean, the bikani sauce might have had a little bit of carbs, not much. All the other stuff was minimal. So I'm, I'm, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. I, I'm still up there. And remember, your goal is don't go too high and don't stay up too long. Well, 121 wasn't terrible. But I really didn't like the fact that I was over three hours later and I still was higher than I was one hour later. And uh, I hadn't even come close to being at my baseline level. So that was kind of a bust. But then I almost never eat that much keto bread anyway. Still, I think I demonstrated that it's not quite as good as you think it is in terms of blood sugar spike. All right, second test. I, I was like, all right, let's see if I can do a lot better. So in this case, I used the bread, the, the regular white bread, but it's keto bread. So it's got all this fiber, manufactured, <laughs> processed fiber, but it's fiber according to them anyway. And I put on a hamburger, used the same toppings, did not do the tuna thing. So it was just one slice of keto bread, should be one net gram of carbs, then I, had, I added a couple slices of cheese. So I thought that probably is going to do better. And lo and behold, it did. Uh, before the test, before I started eating, I was at 84 milligrams per deciliter, which I was, I was very happy with. An hour and 15 minutes later, after eating, I was at 93. So 84 to 93 is a nine-point nine rise. Not bad at all. And then I thought, all right, the real test is going to be the three hours and 15 minutes after eating. How will I be at that point? Will it, have, will it still be going up? And uh, it wasn't. It, it was rock steady at 93 once again. 
uh, at three hours and 15 minutes. So not quite down to the 84, but 93, I'm not going to kick at. I'm not uh, at all unhappy with that. So the second test where I had just one slice of the keto bread, uh, I was well satisfied with, and I wouldn't be afraid to do that you know, as much as I wanted. Uh, but the first test where I had a full hamburger bun and half more, not at all happy. Uh, so the, uh, the first test was a 33-point rise. The second test was a nine-point rise. Major, major improvement. All right, so to wrap this up, let me give a, a, about five points as a summary. First, store-bought keto breads usually are going to work better in terms of glucose spiking than regular bread, but they don't get a free pass. You can't say, well, this has only got one net gram, baby. I could eat nine of these pieces and I would just get nine grams of carbs. Shouldn't even affect my blood sugar much. No, it doesn't work that way. And... Uh, Almost anybody is going to find that it's not going to work as well as you think it will. Second point, uh, my one bread rule, open face sandwich. Don't, don't put a top bun. Don't put a top slice of bread on your so-called sandwich. Have it open face, just the bottom. That rule was vindicated powerfully in this test. It's like, yep, Dennis, you, you weren't so dumb. <laughs> you weren't so foolish with that one slice of bread rule with your keto bread. And as long as I can get tests like this, I will be buying keto bread here and there and using it for tuna salad or for ham, a base for a hamburger, but one bread, one slice only. So that rule was vindicated. Third point, keto breads are going to work better for some than others. I've had some people that say they just don't work at all for me and they give outrageous numbers they got like an hour after eating a keto bread. And there, there's a, probably several reasons. One of the reasons is going to involve a word you've probably never heard of. Most of the low-carb gurus don't even talk about this. Dr. Bernstein did, and I'm going to talk about this possibly in the next video that I make about a situation that can cause you to spike higher than you really should and why these keto breads don't work as well as they boast. The fourth point is that natural fiber is a much more reliable source of fiber. You know, people worry about, do net carbs mean anything? And does fiber, can I deduct it in terms of, it's not going to spike my blood sugar? If it's coming from a natural source, avocados, for example, they have a lot of fiber. They have a lot of carbs. People that, that boast about avocados and say they're a good keto food, well, they are, but only if the net carbs issue really works. And it does. Benedict and I had three avocados, good-sized avocados, that should have been around 50 grams of carbs, more than a candy bar, about a candy bar and a half. And yet it, our, our blood sugar went nowhere. So the natural fiber that's in avocados and that's in chia seeds and certain foods like that, flax seed, that natural fiber tends to be much much more reliable than this uh, manufactured, processed, fake fiber that you come in here. I call it fake fiber. It, 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 I guess it's fiber of some sort, but it's not nearly as good and reliable and helpful as the kind that you find in chia seeds and avocados. Last point, we'll close this up. The food choices, this is the, the great news. This is the great news for every diabetic. The food choices you make and the foods you put on your plate and the foods you put in your mouth make a huge difference. I did that first test and I wasn't satisfied, even though 121 is not terrible, but I wasn't satisfied. So I did a second test with the other type of bread made by the same company, also boasting one gram of net carbs. But I, I changed the amount of bread that I was going to involve and I was going to eat. I deliberately did it. Nobody was forcing me, but I chose that feeling rather confident that would give me better numbers. So when I got better numbers, a 93 instead of a 121, I wasn't shocked. I didn't say, how in the world did that happen? I expected better numbers. Maybe not necessarily a 93, but I expected better numbers. I got them because I've been at this game long enough to know 
that there are some foods you can eat and they just don't raise blood sugar much. And sometimes you just have to limit the ones that could raise blood sugar. So the food you put in your mouth makes a huge difference. What that means is, my diabetic friend, you've got more control over this thing than you thought you did. Sometimes people just assume, I'm diabetic. I don't know how I got that way. I don't know what I can do about it. I don't know why my blood sugar spikes so much and my spouse's blood sugar doesn't or my neighbor's blood sugar doesn't, but it happens to me. I just don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just a mystery. When you begin to understand how carbohydrates affect blood sugar. And when you begin to do tests like I just demonstrated here, you will begin to understand and the mystery will be taken out of the whole process and you'll be able to find a diet that works for you and you'll find that you too can beat diabetes. Probably most of you know my wife Benedicta, but few of you know the amazing paths God has led her to bring her to where she is today. Benedicta was orphaned at an early age and lived with an elderly stepmother growing to adolescence. They were so poor, Benedicta had to drop out of school and sell food door to door for them to survive. As a teen, Benedicta got a job as a housemaid, which developed into a nightmare. She was required to cook, clean, wash, take care of the children, and she had to get up at 4 a.m. every day just to get her work started. Worse than that, she was frequently beaten. At around 20, she moved to the huge city of Lagos where she started her own little business. Sometimes she prospered, but at other times she nearly starved and went days at a time without eating. At one point, she became so sick she passed out in her room and nearly died. She found herself outside of her body and she was able to see the splendors of heaven until she was sent back with a command to share her story. One day, however, her life changed when an American evangelist came to her community to preach. And of course, that was me. The rest, as they say, is history. Benedicta has shared her life story in a recently published autobiography, and you can get it on Amazon as either an ebook or a paperback. A link to this book on Amazon is in the description.